He cannot preach and teach. An elder must be able to preach and teach sound doctrine. Okay? And now he's, uh, he's, uh, he's a criminal, okay, by virtue of what he did, which he has admitted it to, okay? So he, that is disqualified, okay? Uh, the preachers of LA, all of them are disqualified, okay? False teachers, they teach falsehoods. And all of them, they've been divorced and their wives are still roaming around the streets and they're finding themselves the marrying, okay, in contradiction to the scriptures, but we're going to get into it. And then we have Pastor Tony Evans, okay? According to him, whatever he did was a, in an unrighteous action. It wasn't a crime, but the elders felt like, no, this happened in the past, but it warrants Pastor Tony Evans to step down from the pulpit, so for those reasons, yes, he is disqualified. Let's uh, take a look at uh, another clip as well. Here we go. A woman has come forward accusing the pastor of a North Texas mega church of sexual abuse. Good evening, I'm Blake Hansen. Robert Morris is the founder and senior pastor at Gateway Church in South Lake. A woman has come forward alleging Morris sexually abused her as a child for four years, starting in 1982. In response to the allegations, Morris reportedly told the Christian news outlet he engaged in inappropriate sexual behavior. Boxers Amelia Jones live with more on the accusations. Amelia. Blake, the woman who came forward with this allegation of abuse says that it began when she was just 12 years old. She says that she's sharing her story now to encourage other survivors to speak up. Since 2000, when Gateway Church opened its doors, it's grown into one of the largest church communities in the country. What is the Holy Spirit saying to you? The mega church has nine campuses in Texas, one in Wyoming and another in Missouri. Every Sunday, a total of 100,000 worshipers attend services in the churches. Earlier this month, the church's founder, Pastor Robert Morris, was accused of sexually abusing a child in the 1980s. The now 54-year-old woman, who we're not publicly naming, says the alleged abuse began when she was 12 years old and lasted for four and a half years. Most survivors come forward between the ages of 50 and 70. Melanie Sakota works with the Survivors Network of Those Abused by Priest, or SNAP. She says many survivors come forward to prevent what happened to them from happening to somebody else. And I think the fact that Robert Morris is still in ministry is an incentive to come forward because what happened to her when she was young needs to be known. The woman spoke with an online Christian publication, The Christian Post, and confirmed to Fox 4 the information she provided is correct. The woman says the abuse started when Morris was preaching at a local church in Oklahoma and was a guest at her home along with his wife and young child. By the time she was 17 and told her parents what was happening, Morris was the pastor at Shady Grove Church, which is now the Gateway Church campus in Grand Prairie. Sakota says the abuse should have been reported to law enforcement, and it's unclear if it ever was first report to law enforcement because the best investigations of these types of, of crimes are done by secular authorities, not by the church itself. According to the Christian Post article, the Gateway Church says after these allegations were brought to light 35 years ago, Pastor Morris stepped away from ministry for two years to receive counseling. The article has a statement from Pastor Morris that says in part, quote, when I was in my early 20s, I was involved in inappropriate sexual behavior with a young lady where I was staying. It was kissing and petting and not intercourse, but it was wrong. According to the woman's account from the same article, it was more than kissing and petting. He called her a young lady. He didn't acknowledge that she was uh, 12. He said it was, I, I, as I recall, a moral failure. This isn't a moral feeling. The woman declined to do an interview with Fox 4, but her attorney sent a statement on her behalf. It says in part, quote, for decades, churches have ignored her disclosures while embracing, promoting, and endorsing this reported sexual offender as a man of God. The statement goes on to say she hopes this encourages other survivors to speak up. Don't suffer alone and in silence. There are people that will believe you and support you. You just need to find the right people. Okay, so... You, there it is. Okay, so personally, I'm glad that this woman, she, is, she has just come out and then she's speaking. People can see her. I think eventually, you know, it's before I think she didn't want to come out, but that's good. Okay. However, I think her story, because she has spoken about it and Morris has, mid, has admitted to have been involved. Okay. And the elders at their church were aware about it. Even though he's saying that, oh, there wasn't nothing there, right? That he shouldn't have been in that situation having that type of uh, relationship, with self, especially that he was already married, right? So you can see that we have, you know, we have the victim, we have the elders, 
we have Morris himself, okay? We have Morris himself, then we have the parents, then there is a whole bunch of people with the corroborative evidence, and then the story is out there, right? That even now this guy has resigned, uh, he hasn't denied anything, okay? Uh, apart from, according to him, he, you know, he was just touching and everything else. He He's not saying he's going to sue anybody. You can tell, like, his actions, right? Like, you know, we can make judgments and be able to see, ascertain what the truth is, right? We, we read our scriptures. So even though uh, this is, has happened, right? But we do know, like, you know, there's people who make accusations, right? There are people who make false allegations, false accusations, right? That happened to Je Joseph and Mrs. Potiphar. Those things do happen. So when something happens, we want to make sure that, you know, there is some... There, there's some evidence there. There's something there that, okay, this is this, this is this, right? Because we don't want to crucify somebody who is innocent, right? Like that that's not the, the way we should be doing things as Christians. But with these situations, like we can clearly see like, yes, there's something there, there, okay? This woman has nothing to gain. Like, you know, bringing the story now, it's after statute of limitation, things of that nature, right? So we know these people who can accuse people falsely, that's why, you know, you have to be careful just to bring accusation. That's why in the Old Testament, when you bring accusation and it finds out that you were lying, the punishment that was due on that person comes on your head. So it makes people to be wise before they start uh, accusing people, okay? We cannot buy into this issue like, okay, believe all women because we're made to movement. No, we are going to go where the truth leads us, Okay. Matt Driscoll, here it is, okay? Thank you to pastors who care for our family and serve as overseers at the Trinity Church. So Robert Morris, okay, great vision meeting today uh, for an exciting future during the best season of our lives. So Robert Morris is an overseer, you know, one of the overseers at Mark Driscoll's church, okay? Mark Driscoll's church is the Trinity in Arizona. So if you know Matt Driscoll's history and everything, right, he he has um, overseers of him, okay, people who are elsewhere, who are also compromised, okay, who cannot bring any wisdom to him and everything, right, because he always run away from count accountability. So he has no, he has yes men as elders, just, but they are not real elders, okay. It's, uh, it's his personal business. Because he learned his lesson when he lost Mars Hill. So now he operates his church as a, as a business. So that's, uh, you know, that's Mark Driscoll for you. You see what I'm saying? Because, like, people are not going to make any distinction that, okay, this Morris is not the same as, uh, uh, he's, he's not the same as even, like, as Tony Evans, to be quite honest, okay? And then he's not the same as, um, I don't know who our good pastors mean. We need H.B. Charles, okay? They just put them all in one basket, in one category. So they bring a reproach, a bad name for the, Jesus, for, for the church of Christ. That's why when these things happen, you don't want to entertain these things. Okay? You don't want to entertain these things. We have an update on um, Pastor Tony Evans. Okay? So Pastor Tony Evans has stepped down from ministry. And obviously he's going through the, the restoration process. The letter they, they put out, okay, according to the Pastor Tony Evans himself, whatever he did, it was not a crime, but it was an action, a righteous action, unrighteous action. That's what he did, okay? But never disclose what that action is, okay? So we take a look at the Ten Commandments. We did this. It. There's just two things that are remaining on that issue, okay? It's, uh, it's covetousness. Or it's uh, thou shalt not commit adultery, okay? Those are the two things that are remaining on the Ten Commandments. But they sat him down, okay? But they want to make it like, oh, they didn't stay, stay they didn't, no. You removed the senior pastor from pastoring the church, okay? You cannot just do that. You need to have uh, enough evidence to do that. Be that as it may, this is, um, this is the article, okay? So this is uh, Pastor Tony Evans. Following the revelation that Pastor Tony Evans is temporarily stepping down from his ministry role on an account of court and unnamed sin. Evans teaching ministry has reversed course and now says a planned week-long Christian cruise through the Rivera featuring the prominent pastor will not proceed after initially insisting it still would. Okay, so these people are not serious. Okay. You have Pastor Tony Evans who has stepped down to receive restoration 
And then they they thought they were just going to carry on with the cruise. And then Pastor Tony Evans would have been preaching and teaching on the cruise while he's under discipline at the church. Like, what is this? So now, because there was this backlash and they decided to reverse course. And to me, I'm like, that should have, you should have thought about that, that, that to begin with. And then to me also, was Pastor Tony Evans willing to preach and teach on the cruise? And their reason was like, okay, be, be, this was planned long, long, long ago. It doesn't matter what you planned long ago. We are here right now. We are here right now. This guy has, uh, he's under church discipline right now. Why would he be going anywhere teaching? Even if it wasn't on a cruise. Pastor Tony Evans cannot go and preach and teach at any church. He cannot do that. Okay, as long as look, this is their, their standard that they've put, right, at their church, under restoration and everything, he cannot go anywhere else to be preaching and teaching. Absolutely not. For him to do that, it will be in violation what they, uh, the elders are doing there, which I do, I do not agree with, right? But according to their standards, right, they shouldn't have done that. The fact that he was willing to do that to me, I'm like, hold up. What are we doing out here? Okay, but these are the things when you make accommodations, okay, you are on accommodations, but I get it, right? People are going on the cruise because it's Tony Evans. If it's Tony Evans, who's going? But hey, they, hey, I get it. I understand the, in a human thinking way what they are doing. But if you're putting this guy that is under discipline, then why is he going to, uh, to the cruise to be, uh, to be speaking, okay? So that should not be so. All right. Let's continue. It says, to me, last week, oh my God, this is, uh, you know, this, the, the Protestia, they don't play no games, okay? <laughs> Shout out to Protestia. Last week, Protestia Evans of the 19500 members, that's Mega Church, Oakley Bible Fellowship. <laughs> oh man, I'll, 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 just, I'll, I'll just leave that, okay? But let's, this is the quote, okay? A representative of the Urban Alternative founded over 40 years ago by Evans had previously told Christian, uh, Christian Post that the cruise which was set for November 96 would still go on even after Evans stepped away from the helm of his church on Sunday. Hey, <laughs> hey, clean up in Ayo Urban Alternative. <laughs> An agent with the Inspiration Travel, which was administering the cruise, that fish and sweets costing up to near 4000 per traveler, also told Christian Post on Tuesday that the cruise would still go on. Be hey, guys, this is their reasoning why the cruise was still going on. <laughs> Man, and then people still think that we shouldn't know what Pastor Tony Evans has stepped down for. I mean, I could care less for the public. But his congregation, they need to know. Okay, and this is the reason. The Urban Alternative is a separate entity from Oakleaf Bible Fellowship. The agent noted that the Urban Alternative had a contractual obligation to go on with the cruise. Guys, the word of God does not care. It doesn't matter what agreements you have with anybody. The word of God supersedes whatever else is out there. That's how it works. You either compromise on the word of God or you continue with your contractual agreement, okay? The guys who are doing the cruise, that's business. They don't care what's happening at Urban Alternative, right? They're expecting business so they can sort it out that way. But the, the fact that the representative from Urban Alternative actually had to say, like, wait a minute. Our ministry is separate from Oakleaf Bible Church, so therefore we can do as we please. But the guy who is in charge happens to be the same senior pastor. Like, how does it work? It doesn't work like that, okay? Yes, it is a different entity, but this is, I assume, it's a, it's a, it's a parish church, right, of the Oakleaf Bible Church. So when they're putting out the cruise, what's on display over there? Hmm? Let's see how they, they advertise the cruise, okay? Hold on, guys. Let's see how they advertise the cruise, okay? So, enjoy and explore Mexican Rivera Cruise with Tony Evans, okay? Uh, you know, so now it's, this has been, uh, this has been canceled, right? So, this is a point that I, I want to make with you guys, right? So, the guy from, the person from Urban Alternative said that, uh, you know, it's a different entity, which I believe for sure. That's not my argument, but my argument is, when they advertise this, this cruise, right, they're advertising it as Tony Evans. The first thing you're going to remember about Tony Evans is what? Is him being a preacher. 
a preacher of word of Oakleaf Bible Church before you even think about the urban alternative. Why didn't they advertise this 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 cruise as a urban alternative? Okay, enjoy a Mexican Rivera cruise with urban alternative. Why did they put Tony Evans there? Okay, we understand. You okay, you put a Tony Evans because you know there's a meaning behind it, right? Which is absolutely fine. So for them to have that mindset of thinking that it was okay for Tony Evans to go and still preach because the urban alternative has, the Oakleaf Bible Church has no say on urban alternative, like, come on, man. So now let's say tomorrow urban alternative is hosting, um, let's just say, uh, only fans, you know, seminar. Should, should the Oakleaf Bible Church have anything to say about it? No, nothing. After all, <laughs> it's nothing to do with the church, right? So it does not work like that, guys. It does not work like that, okay? The word of God supersedes with everything else that we, we plan. We always have our own plans, okay? The Lord knows. All right. These guys are canceling their crews. Why? Reactionary. Because of the blowback. If they didn't get the blowback, would they have canceled? Morris, Robert Morris, now is resigning. The elders, they'll be like, oh, we, no, we got it wrong. With they're kicking him out. Why? Reactionary. Why, why are you, like, you guys, you are, you are in the church, you are elders. You're supposed to stand on scriptures. Why are you reacting from what the people are saying? Okay? You shouldn't. If whatever people are saying is true and it's according to the scriptures, fine, be it. But you can see that however they've been moving, even how they brought him back to the ministry, they just got his side of his story without investigating nothing. Now they want to investigate. So now they want to go back and start investigating something that happened 35 years ago. If they had investigated this thing 35 years ago, oh, we wouldn't be here right now. So Robert Morris is disqualified. Why? Because he's a false teacher. He cannot preach and teach. An elder must be able to preach and teach sound doctrine okay and now he's uh he's uh he's a criminal okay by virtue of what he did which he has admitted it to okay so he, that is disqualified okay uh the preachers of LA all of them are disqualified okay false teachers they teach falsehoods and all of them they've been divorced and their wives are still roaming around the streets and they're finding themselves the marrying okay in contradiction to the scriptures but we're gonna get into it and then we have pastor tony evans okay according to him whatever he did was a in an unrighteous action it wasn't a crime but the elders felt like no this happened in the past but it warrants pastor tony evans to step down from the pulpit so for those reasons, yes, he is disqualified. Besides, with his, uh, you know, with his trans dispensationalism, that you can be saved without Jesus, okay? And using example, people in Amazon, if they have never heard about Jesus, those people like, no, no, God is not obligated to save anybody, okay? God says everybody knows him according to Romans 1. Creation testifies who he is. Your conscience bears you witness. So you already have two witnesses that already indict you, creation and your conscience, okay? So let the matter be established on the account of two or three witnesses. So God is a God of order. So already, even him, he, he has already given you two witnesses that are already available. Nobody has to say anything to you, but it's right there, right? All right, guys, that is all that I had for you guys today. I hope you find this to be informative to you. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. Be sure to like this video. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and X. Until next time, remember to be in the know. Thank you.